as uh, we are launching today a webinar dealing with vegetable cultivation, it is a time to say that vegetable is a key crop in our uh, Indo-Israel agricultural project. We are having currently nine centers of excellence for vegetables, and we actually have four, three more centers in the pipeline. Uh, so this is the largest cluster of uh, crops we have under our uh, project, and therefore it is one of the most important. It is also uh, comprised of centers that have really achieved the highest level of accomplishment until today in India. And this is putting our task a challenging one because we all the time want to increase the uh, efficiency, the excellence, and the new, uh, uh, I would say, milestones we are achieving under this cooperation. So today, what we will do is our uh, Gilad Marek, our vegetable expert, is really going to walk us through a greenhouse of uh, vegetable, cherry tomato. And what we will aim to do is really absorb lessons learned from the season to see what can we learn now that also in Israel, we are reaching the end of the season and what can we do? We, what can we learn looking back and what can we implement looking forward for the next cycle that can actually start in a couple of weeks from today also. So we have with us in the field, Yuval Elazar that is really walking us uh, through this by taking the video of the visit. We are having Danny Zonshine, project director, that is uh, first time joining us for this webinar and thank you, Danny. We will have, as I said, Gilad Marek, that is our vegetable expert. And we are having alongside I think the most important, Ilan and Adav uh, Leffler, which are the owners of the farm. So I will hand it over to you on the field to actually start this webinar. So Danny, please, uh, opening remarks from your side. Uh, good afternoon, India. Uh, as uh, was said, I'm Danny Zonchan. I'm uh, heading the overseas programs of Mashav. I'm glad to be here which is I, uh, just uh, some 10 kilometers from the, from the Moshav I was born, uh, where I was born, uh, to show you the uh, greenhouses uh, there today that we are going to see today and uh, to hear the, this uh, remarks and uh, trainings from Gilad about the agri... The agri <coughs> uh, agronomic uh, uh, things that we have here, the agronomic project that we have here. And uh, I hope that we will be able to continue with this uh, program and with these uh, lessons or trainings uh, in the next uh, few weeks. And thank you all for being uh, with us. I hope uh, this experience will be a fruitful one. Thank you. Thank you, Danny. Uh, uh, good after, good uh, noon, maybe. For us, it's a uh, late morning. So, hello, India. Uh, I'm Gilad, and uh, in this session, we are going to concentrate of uh, some decisions that farmers can make uh, upon the exist uh, existing uh, um, uh, scenes or everything that you can collect, all the data collection from end of season, and that will help us to understand what our action items to the near future and to uh, programming the, the next uh, season. Uh, we have the privilege to uh, host uh, Nadav over here. Nadav is uh, an old friend of mine and is uh, also agronomist himself and he also a grower. Uh, hi Nadav. Hi Gilad. It's very strange for hi, me yeah. to talk to Nadav in English, but let's uh, try anyway. So Nadav, first of all, thank you for having us here. Uh, could you just explain a little bit about the area, about your farm? Yeah. Hi, India. Um, I am going uh, governor uh, gen to the second generation. I, my father was uh, the first one for 30 years, something like this. Uh, I study a lot of time in the faculty uh, in Rehovot, uh, seven years. And three years ago, I decided with my father to open uh, 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 reopen the, the farm. Uh, we have uh, one hectare of uh, greenhouse, only greenhouse. Uh, we grow uh, 
tomato, cherry tomato and tomato, uh, organic. Uh, the challenge is big. You have a lot to learn if you want. Uh, I'm here to answer. Nadav, why did you, why did, why did you decide to uh, grow organic? Uh, the truth is self here for me. Uh, and second is the price. Uh, I get more money for organic. Uh, I think because uh, uh, the, the grow, the bidulim. The crops. The crops uh, could get uh, a disease, a plant disease and die before uh, I want them to die. And then I lose money. But because of this, the challenge is bigger uh, because if I got uh, the the crops for a long time and I got more uh, income, income for what? Uh, product or, product yield, or yield. tomatoes I'll earn more uh, more. So if you have any question after I can answer. Yeah, Nadav will uh, join us also at the uh, end session that you will have the opportunity to uh, ask uh, questions and we will answer. Uh, so shall we start? Yes. Okay, so the first thing uh, for us now we are talking about uh, decisions for... Uh, uh, we are talking about decision to be made. Uh, to be made at the, end of the, at the end of cycle. Usually at the end of cycle, we are, the, the most of the growers stop doing some activities in order to save money. Uh, sometimes they reduce the fertilization. Sometimes they even reduce irrigation because of cost. And the only thing that we are doing is just preparing ourselves to the next season. Uh, my goal for today is just to give you a, a perspective about data collection that can be very helpful uh, in order to prevent problems for the next season. Okay, so one of the topics that we are going to, uh, to discuss is about radiation, because you see that we are talking about greenhouses so now this greenhouse is covered with the plastic cover and at the top of it we have a shade net. Okay, so that will be useful also for the beginning of the uh, next Gilad, season. Gilad, we have okay. a, little yes. sound, a little sound problem. Can you please uh, put your earphone in a better manner in your ear, please? My earphone, uh, I think there is only one option. You hear me right now better? Much better. Thank you. Sorry. Better. I think it's the key to the telephone. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned, we are talking at one of the first aspects, and uh, it's also uh, considered as uh, one of the biggest, uh, uh, the biggest uh, uh, expense for next year that we are trying to prevent is the radiation penetration into the, into the greenhouse. So now, as you can see, the, plastic, the, the roof of the greenhouse is covered with a plastic cover, and on the top of it, we have shade net. The same system is going to use for uh, right after planting. So the first thing I want to see, I want to check right now. So the first thing I want to check right now is how much radiation is transferred into the greenhouse to see if that is going to be enough or it's too low radiation and therefore we will need or to wash the plastic cover or to sometimes we change it because the plastic cover is suitable for two or three years it depends on the radiation penetration into the greenhouse so i have over here a simple device of a radiation meter i'm always measuring once outside so now you can see that it's approximately 2000 you cannot see it so you will believe me, now it's uh, approximately 2,000, the units are uh, micro Einstein per meter square, okay? Remember this number, because then inside we are, going to, uh, we are going to measure again, and then we will talk about the conclusion. So uh, let's get in the greenhouse. Okay. Okay. 
Welcome to the greenhouse. Uh, so, אתה בא לך לדבר, להסביר על הזן וזה? אם אני יכול, אני אגיד את נדב גם לשאול אותו על הפלנט. פה אנחנו רואים סגמנט של צ'רי טומטו. נדב, מה הוא השם של הווריאטי? לובלו. זה נאם לובלו. זה של הפרה? אוקיי. לא, כן, בקשר לזה. אוקיי, אז אתם יכולים לראות שזה הסוף של הסייקל. מתי שתלת פה? The planting date is approximately at, uh, the, at, uh, at uh, the end of September 19, September 19, before the coronavirus. Uh, so you can see that uh, over here we have a very long, a very long plant. Uh, in Israel, a lot of growers are, what they are doing, a lot of the growers, um, Even though we have a lot of viruses, sometimes they can manage it for a very long cycle, like this. This uh, crop is uh, now approximately eight months, eight to nine, nine months, something like this. And the length of each plant is very, very long. So you can see that this plant, this is the edge of it. And it goes all the way, all the way here. Yeah, this is it. So it's something like six or seven meters. Sometimes it gets even, even higher. It depends on the variety and uh, it depends also about, uh, on the radiation and uh, it depends on some aspects. So now the thing that we can see for, from very uh, first look, we can see the, the um, uh, insect uh, damage. This insect uh, is caused by Tuta absoluta, okay? In organic uh, cultivation, it's very difficult to manage. Uh, we don't have any pesticides that are uh, allowed and also effective. So it's a huge challenge and the growers are doing a lot of uh, action for catching the, the, uh, the fly it, the, the flight itself. Uh, and, uh, a lot of uh, pheromone, Pheromone 6 and uh, a lot of uh, other, uh, other methods. But in this session, we are going to get to everything, okay? So we have three main things that I want you to be concentrated at. The first one is decision to be made about, uh, about the uh, greenhouse itself, okay? It's uh, about the uh, construction, it's about the cover, it's about the fixing if we need, okay? This is sometimes Some, usually the grower come to the greenhouse every day and everything looks very uh, familiar so they don't pay attention to things that they need to fix okay so this is one thing about the structure the other thing is about the irrigation system which we will talk immediately and the third thing will be about the plant what data we can get from the plant right now when it looks in like in this uh, condition that it's no longer It, they are just finishing the, the last harvests and then they are going to say goodbye to the, to the plants. Or, they are going to end the cycle in three weeks from now. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about, about the structure. One thing that I want you to uh, one thing I want you to uh, um, pay attention is uh, a decision. about the, the covering, okay? So we measured outside the radiation. You remember the number? It was 2,000 approximately. And now inside the greenhouse, it's about 800, okay? 800, that means that it's only 40% of penetration of the, of the, um, uh, the, the light or the PAR, radiation into the greenhouse because this is PAR uh, measure, okay? It's the photosynthetic uh, uh, ray of light. So that means that we have over here 60, 60, 60% of, shed of shading. Sometimes it's too much. For a developed crop, now they don't want to develop a new leaf and the leaf, uh, leaf activity and we have a very long day now in Israel. 
the, uh, in the 21 of uh, June, which five days from now, it's going to be the longest uh, day uh, in the year. So that means that the radiation might be enough. But for the, uh, but for the next cycle, when we are talking about the uh, end of September, it's going to be shorter day, much shorter. So 60% of uh, shading, sometimes it's too much. So over here, I think the design should be, uh, the program should be uh, planting with this coverage. That will be okay. But we will, we will need to act very fast to remove it, to remove the shade net and uh, stay only with the plastic cover. Okay, now I don't have the opportunity to measure how much is the plastic cover transferring. The right action to do for the farmer is to remove from an area, the, from one particular area, the shade net and to measure the penetration of the, of the plastic cover itself. Okay, so this is about the, the plastic cover. Nadav, uh, This plastic cover uh, was replaced only one year ago. So usually when growers in Israel buying uh, plastic cover, they are buying, uh, 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 they don't buy it very thin. They are buying it a little bit uh, thicker and they are trying to use it for two or three years at least, okay? But I prefer that every year you will remove the shade net just to measure the radiation percentage. And then you can decide maybe the right action thing to do is just to wash the roof from the dust on it and then cover with the shade net again before the next season. Okay, so this is about the radiation. One more thing, follow me. One more thing that sometimes they, the grower can forget. Um, sometimes it just don't, ha don't pay attention to. This is a, a, an example for a roof that needs to be replaced. Okay, even, even though he just buy it one year ago, because of the strong wind, it was damaged. So now the grower needs to have a remark how many plastic cover in this greenhouse he needs to uh, replace and just to buy it in advance because sometimes they don't have exactly the, the same uh, product in the market. You need to prepare yourself much earlier. So even though it has uh, now something like 90 days, 90, three months at least for the next uh, planting, it will be better to just uh, have the plastic cover for now. Another thing that I'm expecting the grower to do right now is to go through the, all the paths and to see uh, over there. You can see over here. Over here, you can see some weak area some places that the the catching of the of the plastic cover is not very tight over here you can see near the uh, near the gutter you see that it's not very uh, uh, it's not very stretched okay so this is a weak point so at the end of the cycle when he has no uh, he has no plant in the greenhouse it's a good opportunity just to go up and fix all the locations that need the fixation Uh, by the way, this is a, a track for uh, uh, monitoring the uh, monitoring the pest. Uh, we talked about the tuta absoluta, so you can see a lot of adults over here, and they are doing the damage. Sometimes it's not enough uh, it, to catch all of them. It's just for monitoring. The grower can come and detect how much he has, if it has uh, uh, more than last uh, more than the last visit or something like this. He can just uh, put, uh, this is the timing for pesticides. Um, okay, now another thing about the, the uh, construction, now it will be uh, beneficial for the grower to go to have a trial all along the greenhouse and to see if, they, if, if he needs to do some fixation for the construction itself. Sometimes the, the wires for the trellising need to be fixed or uh, this is a good example. Could you just uh, over here? You see that what happens is because of the weight of the plant, these two trellising lines become very closer. So this this plant actually needs to be in two rows, 
and the, the radiation need to penetrate inside. Over here, it doesn't happen. That means that the, the, the competition between neighbor plants is very high for the radiation. So this is something that at the end of the cycle, it needs to be fixed in advance. Uh, I can give you a tip. In this case, it, when you see that the, the, uh, the weight is taking them uh, to the center, you can just, uh, for all this line, you can just take a stick or a, a just a stone uh, uh, pipe in the, right, uh, uh, in the right length, something like 80 centimeters, and just put it over there and then keep the wires away one from the other. Okay? So this is something that at the middle of the season, you, yeah, on the top, on this wire, between the two wires, on the wires that uh, um, that catch the this one. Okay, this is something something that if the grower do once at the end of the cycle, it's easy to see and easy to understand the uh, the disadvantage of uh, this aspect. But at the beginning of the season, no one will notice it because then the the plants. They are not heavy yet, and they are not catching it into the center, so uh, no one will recognize. So this is something that uh, also um, uh, it's about the construction, uh, and it needs to be fixed in advance. Uh, another another important uh, uh, action that the grower should do is to go like for a, a tour all along the greenhouse and to see by himself or one of his workers if he has small holes in the net. Okay, we have a net over here. Can I'm happy, but in the end, we have one. This is a, this net is insect-proof net, uh, 50 mesh. 50 mesh means that in one square inch, we have 50 holes. This is uh, to uh, to prevent the white fly that in Israel is a very, very big problem. I think also in India, you suffer from this uh, problem. But if you have a very small hole, like here, over there, you need to, be, you need to fix them. Okay, the, the method to do that is or using a small, uh, small uh, net and just, uh, uh, just uh, or, or sew it or uh, with a silicone or with a glue just to uh, put it on and prevent the insect because the insect can fill this uh, hole from far away. Okay, so another thing that uh, is about the construction, we said the uh, fixing of the wires, we said about the plastic coverage, uh, we said also about uh, if we need to wash it. Uh, and one more thing that is not really about the construction, but it's a decision to be, to be made also right now, is about the... the uh, you see that the polyethylene coverage on the top of the soil, uh, it's made in order to prevent, uh, to prevent uh, weeds. Naturally, you can see that if uh, Nadav wouldn't cover it, so we will have a lot of weeds. The natural environment over here is weedy. Okay? So this is another decision that uh, the farmer can make. He can just decide if he can use this material again. And if yes, if it's in a good condition, he can just cut it in the middle and just put it aside, okay? And uh, just uh, use it for the next time uh, again. If not, he needs to decide if he's going to use this method again. And I think that should, uh, if, we are talk if we are looking at on the natural conditions. And even this is not 100% uh, solution, because look at that. This is nice thing to do. You see, even though we have a coverage, we have a weed. Even from a very small hole, it just needs to have a sun radiation and it germinates. Okay, so naturally it will be a disaster if he wouldn't uh, use this uh, coverage. Okay? What did you say? Ah, okay. Okay, so this is about the construction. If you have questions about the construction, I think it will be to write it down right now for you, and then at the end of the session, you just uh, raise it up. The second thing that I wanted to mention is about the irrigation uh, equipment, uh, the irrigation uh, 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 irrigation uh, um, 
and soil and soil cultivation. Okay. In this case, we have you see that this is a sem- very sandy soil. Okay. So it's going to be quite easy to uh, uh, to cultivate. But uh, the things that the grower need to do right now at the end of the cycle, it's a good opportunity to see if they have any uh, any damages in the in the system itself. So while irrigating, I will advise him to just uh, walk all along the pipe, all along the laterals, and to see if there is a, a damage, if uh, there, is, there are some places that have more weeds or maybe a... a big holes in the pipe that need to switch right now. So this is a good option right now, but you, he, holds, he also has a, an opportunity to do that before the next cycle, okay? Now, another thing he needs to do is, and this is something that we are always um, uh, need to remember to do it, even while growing, uh, washing, the, washing the laterals. You need to put the valve on, and go at the end of the end of the line. And over here we have the laterals. Okay. Okay. Ah, the lateral. Here is the end of the lateral. You see that it's a. Uh, uh, okay. This is the end of the lateral. So what he needs to do is uh, while uh, while the irrigation is off uh, is on, uh, just go one by one on the laterals to take it off and leach some water until all the dirt and all the uh, big particles will go away. Another thing that the growers in Israel can do is to take one or two drippers to a laboratory of one of the. This is uh, an equipment of a company, Israeli company that named Metafim. And they are giving a service that if the grower will send them uh, um, two or three uh, um, drippers, so they can uh, take it to the laboratory and to say if it's clogged, and if yes, so what is the what is the treatment that he needs to uh, to apply? If it's uh, if the source of it is organic, so it needs to use uh, oxidized water. If it's uh, just uh, clogging with uh, uh, with iron or with uh, ba- in Israel we have a problem of uh, bicarbonate, so it can be melted by uh, acid treatment. So usually he can do just take uh, several uh, drippers, send it to the laboratory and get a result after two or three days, and then then to decide what is the treatment that needs to be uh, done right away. Uh, it's good to do that when you don't have the the crop, the new plantation, and just then remind because if you are doing it in advance when the when the soil is empty you can use a very cheap acid uh, and if not if you are already in the during the crop so that means that you need to uh, use the phosphoric acid which is much more expensive and the treatment also you don't you, you don't know if it's uh, succeeded right or not over here, you have the opportunity after the treatment to send again to the laboratory and to make sure that all the drippers are empty. Okay, so this is this is it. Another thing that uh, um, about the irrigation, I think the irrigation. This, these are the main aspects. Of course, every grower between seasons and also during the season need to do the usual uh, maintenance of the uh, of all the filters. This is something that we are doing in a weekly basis or once to two weeks. Uh, this is something that not for the end of the cycle. It's uh, good for uh, any time. So we talked about the the construction. We talked about the coverage of the plastic of the roof and, and the soil. Uh, and now I want us to. Uh, uh, now I want us to concentrate a little bit about the plants, because the plants they're telling us uh, a long story about what happens from the beginning of the season until now. So first thing I think is uh, it will be better for the grower to detect if he has a uniformity in the crop. Because now it's very difficult to see. If you see a weak plant right now and uh, it's only located in one area, so we can define. If, if it, all the line looks the same but weaker than the rest of the, the, rest of the field, 
So that means that it uh, can be something on the row itself. Maybe it's because of irrigation. Maybe it's because of uh, bad cultivation in this area. So I think the grower needs to map uh, the uniformity. And if he sees some locations that are difficult to detect, what are the reasons? This is something that we are going to talk uh, at, the end of the, at the end of the session. Okay, so I will give you some examples and you will be able to ask. Another thing that is not relevant to here because this is an organic crop, uh, but look at the edges, you see a lot of weeds. Okay, so weeds also telling a story. That means that over here they have uh, enough water uh, and they don't uh, treat it very much. So that over here it's really well explained because it's an organic matter. It's an organic, uh, sorry, it's an organic uh, crop. So it doesn't uh, allow to use any, uh, um, uh, any herbicides. But if it's not, if it's a conventional crop, so uh, in this case, I would advise to use the material to prevent uh, germination before planting and to do that uh, while you don't have any other uh, plants in the field, okay? In an empty greenhouse, this is a remark for the grower to just keep in mind that he needs to spray uh, inside the greenhouse, but also outside of the greenhouse. You can see through the net a lot of uh, weeds. Can you see it? Yes. <laughs> Um, I, wanted, uh, I wanted to emphasize this point because the fact that we have a lot of weeds over there, that means that this is a habitat for a lot of insects and a lot of, uh, a, a lot of uh, some, even some crops can transfer viruses. But if they are not, uh, not from the same family, this one, for example, is the same family of the tomato. Okay, it's the same solanium. It's not the, of course, it's not the same plant, but it's from the same family. So that means that if we are going to spray this with a material, it can harm the, the tomato uh, as well. So this is something that you need to be focused at and to have a smart decision how you are going to treat the, the weeds outside of the greenhouse and inside in the greenhouse. Okay, um, uh, we wanted to take one plant off. So this is the time, uh, Nadav, which plant is <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can, so over here I have a good example for a decision to make in the, inside the, the greenhouse at the end of the end of the cycle. I can see over here I see a weakest uh, plant. You see that is not similar to all the rest of them, and I'm curious to see that if over here I will detect uh, root disease or nematodes or other uh, other um, uh, soil disease that can be seen on the plant itself. So this will be the worst condition, okay? So I'm going to take this plant off. Can only wait. Okay. Can only the pot. Bona ekhla tab sani wa rokh mama sag. Rega. Can ah, val po rega es po difnes ta ukir oto. Es po esber yafet. Look, uh, this is an opportunity also to show you a very good cultivation of uh, plant disease uh, in the organic, uh, organic cultivation. He, Nadav detects during the season some botrytis on the main stem. So the treatment was instead of spraying, he can just brush it with a material that's allowed in the organic uh, cultivation, which is cotide. It's a um, cooper. Actually, it's just Cooper. Uh, he made from the Cooper, he made the uh, um, emulsion. And then he can uh, just, uh, just avoid spraying. Okay, so, so over here I detect that this is the plant. Okay, but the first thing I'm doing, I want to see the, I want to see inside the plant. Sometimes it's become a little bit brown inside so if it's over here you see that is not the case it looks quite good so maybe the the defect of the plant over there it's due to the botrytis that uh, didn't uh, um, it uh, it was difficult for the plant to transfer water so that's it but the next thing i would do 
I will take off the ops. <laughs> I will take off the roof. I want to see the roof system. Ah, it's really amazing. Okay, because that's what I didn't want to do. Okay. So first of all, I want to see. Uh, I want to see that that was the root system. Okay. Okay. That was the root system. So first of all, I, I want to look the direction of the root. If it was just like this, very shallow, so that means that uh, the irrigation treatment wasn't very good because the, the, maybe it was very small uh, irrigation, only the top layer was uh, wet, and therefore the, all the roots would uh, just spray to the um, wet area. But in this case, you can see that is well developed all the, for all the direction. That suggests that the irrigation was quite okay. The next thing I want to see if I have nematodes. Uh, over here, I see that it's quite clean, okay, which is good because for organic cultivation, the only method that we need, uh, that we have, to treat against nematodes is a solaric, uh, solar, a solaric uh, soil fumigation, which takes a long time. It takes a, lo a lot of time, sometimes at least 40 to 50 days. And the other thing that we can apply is um, a chicken manure that helps also, but it has also disadvantages because it's uh, uh, harming the plant, uh, the, the area with new seeds of weed, which is quite problematic sometimes. And it's also not a very heavy treatment. It's not, not like 100%. Okay, so we have the roots look clean. They look white. That's very good. If it was brown, I would uh, try to detect which, uh, which plant disease is it. If it's something that I cannot recognize from the internet or from just uh, uh, um, photos of uh, plant diseases in the internet, so I can just send it to a laboratory to detect what uh, kind of uh, disease is it? The next thing I would do is just cut the cut the the plant into half like this. Okay, over here it happens naturally because of my aggressive uh, taking off. But I want to say that the heart of it is quite green. Sometimes it can be hollow, or sometimes it can be um, it can be uh, brown. Uh, in Israel, we have a lot of uh, a lot of area that we have uh, cr uh, crown rot uh, disease, uh, Fosarium crown rot, and then we need to decide uh, about the plants that we are going to uh, going to uh, plant for the next time. Maybe to find out uh, uh, resistant uh, uh, varieties from the seg same segment, and we are going to talk about it immediately because this is one of the a home assignment that we can suggest. How much money is it? Okay, another thing that I want you to look at, at the plant we said about the uniformity, we also mentioned about the roots, and also I want you to see if you have a lot of uh, disease that tells the story of, the, of this cultivation. For example, over here we see from the winter, we had a lot of botrytis. So remember this fact, because we are going to uh, we are going to talk a little bit about it uh, right now. So, I just want to to ask a, a few short questions before you leave the greenhouse. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. I, I think first of all, it was amazing. We'll touch everything in a few minutes when you sit for the Q and A. But do you have uh, tensiometers in this uh, greenhouse? We have tensiometers in this farm. Nadav tensiometers We have already. Uh, we have also here. Okay. So just if you can uh, show you want to see the station about it in, the, in the second stage. This is one point that before you leave. The second. Okay. Nadav, is, could you, you have any the... mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Do you have just, any uh, pollination uh, solution? Biological pollination? Ah, yes, of course, yes. So if you can show uh, it. They took it. Uh, uh, okay, we we have in Israel 100%. Follow me, I will talk in the meantime. Uh, in Israel, 100% of the greenhouses that are uh, growing uh, tomatoes are using uh, bamboo bees for pollination. 
In the pepper plots, we have also, uh, if it's a very heavy uh, heat, so we are using um, uh, honeybees, and then we switch them to uh, bamboo bees. Uh, but over here, you know, uh, two months from the end of the cycle, they can take off the bamboo bees because they are not going to to harvest this uh, crop. But now you have the opportunity to see the station of the motes of the tensiometers. Uh, Dan, you see it uh, well? Dan? Yes, we can see it, yes. Yes, you can see it, okay. The only maintain, uh, this is a good point that uh, sometimes farmers forget to take it off before the end of the cycle and then it can be broken. So this is another good point, Dan, that at the end of the cycle, before you are starting to take off the plant, so uh, t make sure that you took off the tensiometers. Okay, so done. any other questions in the field or we can go to sit somewhere and to have a small chat? Just uh, to see the bumblebee hive. Ah, so uh, as I said that they have, they used to have but two months in Israel, two months before end of cycle, they are taking the bumblebees out because the pollination is uh, pointless. You know, it takes 60 days from pollination until harvesting. And if they know that they are not going to harvest it, so they are going to give the bamboo bees away or, uh, because they are, paying, uh, they are paying for every month of active. Thank you. So the, at this okay. stage, I think uh, you, you gave me the, the points and uh, we can move to the Q&A so you can go to the other location. And uh, I will take it from here until you reach the office. Um, I think if to do a, a short recap of what uh, Gilad was taking us, we are talking about three different aspects when we are coming to the end of the season. We are talking about infrastructure, we are talking about irrigation, and we are talking about agronomy, about the plant. And when you were mentioning the different aspects of the infrastructure, I think what I like is a concept that you need to open your eyes and go out of the routine. Because as you were saying, we are all living in the greenhouse every day. So there are things that if we don't take a decision in the morning to look at, we just don't see. So analyzing the quality of the plastic, analyzing the quality of the sheet, uh, seeing uh, what should be fixed and putting in advance the order. So when time is there between the two cycles, we are uh, renovating the greenhouse. So preparing in advance into, in terms of all the infrastructure, uh, putting the, uh, closing the holes in the net. We are seeing in every greenhouse, and this is part of our lives, that holes are pr uh, occurring. So please not take it as if this is the situation and this is what I'm going to live with because when we do have a hole, it means that all of this investment of putting a 50 mesh net is worthless because the insects can come from a, a hole a size of a hen and let us put a net to close this hole. Very simple, but very important. Uh, what I saw the mulch. It, it depends on the culture. In Israel, many times you put a very thick mulch for many years, for two, three seasons. And in India, sometimes you put a one season mulch. So let's evaluate it. Let's really see, is this mulch still effective? Is this mulch really giving us what we are aiming for, which is weed control and uh, moisture uh, preservation? So if yes, let's keep it. If no, let's deal with it. And again, prepare in advance, order a new mulch, put the time in terms of labor and, uh, and the right timing to, to implement it before the next crop is coming in. When we talk about irrigation, then we are talking about evaluating the irrigation system. Walk, open the irrigation and walk along the pipeline, walk along the drip line. Look, listen, try to see if you have any problems. Then flush the system, like Gilad was saying. Clean it. And how to clean it? 
you need to make sure that you have enough pressure. Here I will stop for a second because I see Gilad is entering a new greenhouse. So please, Gilad, I'm hand, handing it over back to you. I cannot hear you. You are on, you, on mute, Gilad. Just a second. Now you yes. hear me, right? Yes. So we thought about the closure before the, before the Q and before the questions and answer, uh, just to, sh to to show you when it's done properly. You know, this is a very good grower. You saw the end of the cycle, so you see that it wasn't fixed very much. You know, the trellising was uh, not done well uh, at the end. But look how look how it looks at the beginning of the cycle. It's quite amazing that this is an organic uh, crop, and you see that the plants look very. Uh, first of all, the uniformity is amazing. Uh, the plant vegetation looks good. It starts to have the fruit setting and the flowering. So you can see that the flowering is properly done er uh, earlier. You asked about the bamboo bees. So I can, sh I can show you it right now, but look, this is a visit of the bamboo bees. Could you see it? Yeah, you can see. Even here, can you, maybe can even. you put it uh, more time so we can see it uh, clearer? Yeah, you can see. Uh, this is the visit. You see that uh, uh, there is a brownish. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. So uh, you want to see the at the bamboo the, the bamboo bees? Can here it is over there, I think. In it. Okay. Ah, yes, a boy official tmuna. Look. You see, this is the box for the bamboo bees, and they have pass in and pass out. And they are active right now. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, excellent. Great. So now let's go to sit somewhere. And yes. uh, Dan, could you just take it from here? Yeah, of course. I will actually get back to the point where, where I was. So we covered the infrastructure, uh, lessons learned, and I was talking about the irrigation. So we were saying, actually open irrigation, end of the season, walk along every drip line, look, listen, touch, see if everything is working in this aspect. Then flush the system. And flushing again is something that you need to know your system. So. The idea, the principle is how to flush where the pressure is effective, meaning the pressure is high enough to clean away every clogging material that we accumulated in our pipeline. So don't open all the drip lines at the same time because then pressure falls. Keep only a few, sometimes even one drip line at a time. Open it at the end, see that it is cleaning itself. You get clean water at the end, then you close it back and open the next drip line, send samples to the company. And here it is a very important thing to do. So send, just see the video in the meanwhile, how they are packing in the farm, the product. Uh, just guide me, Gilad, if you want to say or explain something about what we see now. You can see the cherry tomato the already packed. Yeah, you have the opportunity to see the end product, which is in Israel. Now it's become very popular to have it in cluster because it looks more fresh, but you see that this is the quality. Okay. Now, David, one of them is approximately one kilogram. Yeah. Something like a kilogram to kilo point two. And uh, as an uh, organic, uh, as an organic product, which is uh, very beautiful, we cannot, we cannot uh, have it in the regular supermarket. Usually, from a uh, special uh, distributors. 
אה, מגניב. אוקיי, אז אני יכול לשבת או זה שן, אתה רואה? אוקיי. אוקיי. Yes, so, uh, gentlemen, uh, thank you for listening so far, and uh, if you have any questions, uh, so Dan, could you just direct me? Uh, otherwise, we will do some... I suggest that you read out the questions, and we'll take it from there. All right, yeah, there are a few questions. Uh, two questions regarding the height of the structures. Uh, up to what height of structures Uh, can you use for different crops, including cherry tomatoes? Um, this is one. Okay, I, I would like to answer one by one, okay? So, first of all, the height, the, the, the greenhouses, the height is not a matter of the crop inside. Actually, it's a matter of uh, microclimate that you want to achieve. Uh, we have a benefit by using uh, the highest uh, gutter as we can. In Israel, the standard is between uh, four, uh, four meters to five meters, the gutter. And, uh, and this is uh, in order to uh, have a large volume of air. The large volume of air enabling us to, monitor, to, uh, uh, to compensate the weather. Uh, think about like this. If it's a very small tunnel, so it has, uh, uh, it has small volume of air. So right after the sunset, it will, uh, the, the temperature will decrease dramatically. Uh, if you have a, a high volume of air, so it will happen much slowly. Okay, another thing is about the humidity. The air is holding humidity. So if we have, and humidity is stabilized the temperature, as we all know. So if we have a, a large volume of air, it will, uh, the, the, the humidity inside is uh, higher. And this is something that enabling us to conserve uh, temperature, high temperature or low temperature at the, at the summertime uh, for a longer uh, duration. Uh, about the trellising itself, so obviously we are trying to uh, avoid the top of it. And even if we do have a very high greenhouse, if it was like six meter uh, height, still we were trellising, we were trellising just uh, 3.5 meter. Uh, because of uh, because of the workers uh, um, path uh, an option to uh, to uh, harvest at the, at the top of the greenhouse and also we need to keep in mind that if we have a very high greenhouse we have uh, huge differences of the temperature and humidity between the upper part to the uh, to the bottom uh, part uh, At the highest part, we have higher temperature and uh, lower temperature at night, but much higher uh, temperature at the daytime. And then, you know, at the head of the plant, we have all the activities. Usually the class, if we are talking about uh, tomatoes, so the clusters that uh, are in pollination usually will be in the high area. So if it will be very, very high in the greenhouse, first of all, it will be uh, exposed to uh, direct radiation, which means that it's going to suffer from a heat stress. And uh, secondly, it, uh, the, the differences of the temperature, the distribution of the temperature along the day will be not stable. It will be very high at the, mo at, the, after, at, the, at the noon, at the middle of the day, and very cold at the end of the day. And then, you know, the cracking of the cherry tomato will occur uh, even more. Okay, so just for summary this topic, the height of the plant is in order to achieve Uh, the best uh, uh, cl uh, agroclimate that we can achieve. The height of the plant is just, uh, it, it just for uh, um, the activation or the action items for the, uh, uh, the, uh, for the workers. So at this stage, Gilad, what I suggest, uh, I know we have more questions. Let's just set yeah. the ground for the last part. For me, it is important to have an uh, action item. So actually try to put us into uh, activities yeah. that will enable us to take it forward following this. Uh, of course. So yeah, Dan, please. we will just uh, take one opportunity for one second to show you the sprayers that the worker use and the tractor if you want. And then I have over here a piece of paper with, the, uh, with all the uh, parameters that we talked about. And then we have uh, action items. Okay, is it suitable? Yes, yes. Okay, so this is a sprayer that is uh, 
uh, very commonly used in Israel in a small uh, plot like here. It's, the plot size is one hectare, so the grower will use this one. Uh, but you see that they have several of them because we want to get uh, the spray only at the time that is uh, suitable for it. Of course, it's uh, late in the afternoon. So in order to uh, do all the area in one time, so we need to use several of them. Okay. And what else? Ah, this, this device is just for uh, cutting, uh, uh, cutting the weeds before they're starting to uh, blossom and uh, produce the seeds for the next generation. Okay. Um, Yuval, I'm going to talk about the missions. אוקיי? דן? אני איתך לגמרי, כן. אתה רוצה להנחות, כאילו להגיד לי, ואני זה, או שאתה רוצה פשוט לתת לי לסכם, ואז להגיד להם משימות שהם יכולים לעשות? כן, אני מציע שאתה תיקח את זה קדימה, ואם יהיה לי הערות אני אגיד. אוקיי, אז אנחנו דיברנו על ההחלטות שהמשימות צריכים לעשות לפני הסיבות הבאות. אז עכשיו אני רוצה לעשות כמה פרקטים שיכולים לעזור את המשימות שאתם עובדים איתכם. And we are going to just uh, mention the several uh, several uh, um, topics that we we just talked about uh, we talked about the the uh, um, the roots okay that was important we wanted to see if we have nematodes we didn't have but think about uh, think about a, a scenario that you would have nematodes or other root disease or roots volume or We said uh, about the root uh, direction. So we talked about the roots. I would like you to take it as an action item and to search, pr just uh, pretend that we had a problem of nematode. And some of you will pretend that we had a problem of uh, fusarium, okay, or verticillium. These are a uh, very common plant uh, disease that, the, that come from the root. So I want you to Uh, find um, several uh, options uh, for varieties that has a resistance by the declaration of the producers they have a declaration that they have a resistance to this problem but so just uh, it Gilad, has to... I, I, again I, maybe I would like to say something before you you jump into this what ah, great Gilad, Go ahead. what Gilad and myself were uh, planning is that After you saw the Israeli greenhouse, which is on the closing part of the season and towards next season, what we want is for you, the project officers and the team in the centers of excellence, to actually take on yourself the activities that Gilad was presenting. So what we want to do is actually divide you into groups that Gilad will uh, suggest. And in each group, some of you will do these activities. So Gilad was already presenting the roots. So some of you will be expected to go to the greenhouse, uproot an uh, old plant before it is finishing, and evaluate the root system. See if you have nematode, see the structure, and then get back to us and to Gilad with a report on what you do. So what we will do is hear Gilad, he will walk us through the tasks, And after the webinar is finished, Dev will share with specific centers of excellence, specific tasks. So not all of you will do everything, but Dev will guide you who is doing what. And our expectation is that in the next webinar and towards the ne next webinar, you will send us pictures, documents, data that we will take forward. So this was the overview I wanted to give and Gilad, I give it back to you, please. Thank you, Dan. So uh, I just want to make it a, a very short list, but for, I think for us as a group, it's going to be very interesting if you would share the, the uh, output that you are going to uh, achieve. So we said about the roots. Uh, one of the main topic was the roots. We want to decide about the roots if we have a, a, a certain uh, a problem or certain challenge that we want to resist. So we mentioned nematodes, we, we mentioned plant disease, let's say generally, uh, root diseases, okay? It can be fosarium, verticillium, others, it doesn't matter. So I would like you as a, one task 
is uh, as a challenge to just uh, contact different uh, seed varieties, uh, companies or distributors, and to ask uh, the list of the varieties that we can use that will be suitable for your next season planting because we have a seasonal uh, varieties. So we need to be sure that it's going to be suitable for our, uh, our season. And I want you to, uh, um, to find some options that will be with the resistance for uh, nematodes and other plant diseases. And just prepare a very short list of uh, th three or four varieties that they are optional. Now, it's not easy as it sounds because I want you to do that in a certain segment. If you are growing a cherry tomatoes, like over here, we grow cherry tomatoes, but, but they are long cherry tomatoes. See, it's not brown and it's cluster. This is the product. So don't just use another product. It's not a uh, relevant uh, variety for big tomato or just a, 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 a round cherry tomato. This is the product. This is what the market needs. So let's find a variety that has a resistance for nematodes, but in this segment. So if you want to have your own segment, so explain us what the segment was, why is it important for the market, what is the benefit for the market, and then what are the varieties that we can use. Okay, so this is first task. Second task is about the irrigation. So let's pretend over here, I can tell you for sure that the, that the system is uh, well treated and you see that the greenhouse are very uniform, but still let's pretend that we have a finding that you open a, a dripper, dripper line, you just expose one dripper and you saw that it has a lot of bicarbonate, which will be white, like a white coverage on the edge of the, of the filter of the, uh, of the dripper. And then find out from the distributor, from Netafim or from Nan, or for, it doesn't matter which company is it, even if it's a local company, just they need to give you the description how to treat it. Okay. So, we want to solve one problem of bicarbonate and another task for other people that want to take this challenge, uh, it will be clogging by iron. Sometimes in the, in several locations, we have a problem of iron, a lot of a high concentration of iron in the water. It will clog the, the, uh, the drippers and you would see that it's going to be a reddish cover on the dripper. Okay. So, Let's pretend that we find it. And now we have to have two solutions, one for the iron, one for the bicarbonate. Okay, so we have two tasks so far. Um, and the other, uh, the other one, uh, the last one, we, we, we talked about uh, the, the, uh, the plant itself and the root. Um, and now we mentioned about the irrigation. And I want to talk about another aspect of uh, the coverage of the greenhouse. Let's pretend that we already used the, the plastic cover for uh, two years and now it needs to be replaced. So I want you to give us two options. One option will be just for a, a, a greenhouse that we are going to grow tomato again but it's a, very, it's a very humid area and we need the protection from high humidity. So you will find out that they have, they have the companies have some suggestion that they are not just a plastic cover, it's a plastic cover with, with protective uh, lay, layer uh, to prevent uh, humidity from the roof, okay? So I want you to find out uh, two options at least uh, two distributors of uh, plastic coverage uh, and to give us the, uh, the, all the, the list of the things that you need to tell them in order to get the product, which will be the thickness, uh, the sizes. So just prepare this list and just give one example of one particular greenhouse that you know the answers for that. Like you know the length, you know the wide of it, and you know that you are going to use it for two years and you need this uh, um, protective uh, layer. Um, this is the third task. And the, four, the last one will be about soil fumigation. 
we need to decide at the end of the cycle what is the soil disinfection or soil fumigation we need to do. So let's take Nadav opportunity. We saw that we have no nematode problem. We didn't see any plant disease that uh, established in the root system, but we did see some weeds, okay? Over here, we have an organic cultivation. So I want you to, in the next uh, chapter, I want you to suggest a solution. What will be the best solution uh, to uh, have the, so the, the, the soil fumigation? How is going to be uh, applied? What do you need for that? And I want you to give two options, one organic and one conventional. It's just a clue. It needs to be chemical, okay? So the organic without chemicals and the regular one, the conventional one, with chemicals. So which chemical is it? How are you going to apply it? Do you need a special uh, uh, application like uh, other uh, uh, sprinkler system or drip system or manual, whatever? Find the solution, okay? So is it uh, understandable, the task? You're on mute, Gilad. Yeah, I think, uh, so, Gilad. Um, yes. You know, I think it's quite understood, uh, and I do think if anybody has any questions, we can uh, revert back and clarify. Uh, sure. So uh, this is uh, to your question. Um, yeah, I think uh, definitely we are covering all uh, fields that you described, so we have uh, the action items in place. Uh, at this stage, we are getting closer to the clo closing of this webinar, so I, I would take five more minutes if there are any questions. Omer, how many questions do you have there? There are two, two more. Two more. So yeah, let's uh, answer these two last questions and uh, close. Sure, uh, I will try to answer uh, quickly, okay. All right, thank you. One is regarding the last uh, topic, how to decide the span length and wide for a naturally ventilated poly house. I didn't get the question. How Again, decide, could you repeat? Yes, how to decide the span length and wide for a naturally ventilated poly house, like this one. Mm. It, uh, okay, it's, I think it's totally different uh, topic about how to decide which uh, greenhouse to choose. Uh, as, a, uh, as a, you know, a finger rule, uh, if you have a high crop, like a trellising crop, so it needs to be above 4.5 meters. The length of it, the best length is 35 meters. Okay, and all the rest of it, I think, uh, it's completely do different topic, so uh, let's take another opportunity to have yeah. a conversation about this. All right. And okay, we'll just uh, complete, Omer, I will just complete uh, the answer. What I see that many times when you evaluate the infrastructure and the irrigation, you must remember you are not alone. The company that provided you with the material, the company that you will address, that will give you the solution, are part of your team. So whenever you have a question, how do, what is my problem? Is it organic matter in the dripper or bicarbonates? What is my problem? Is it uh, the quality of the polyethylene or the size of the polyethylene? Go to the company and ask. Ask them to guide you because it's a win-win. It's their motivation to help you find the right solution. So please, Omer, back to you. Yes, the, la the last one is regarding uh, specific techniques to control uh, the tooth absoluta. Wow. <laughs> okay, this is like an like a endless war with the tooth absoluta. Uh, I, think, um, I think what we are trying to achieve usually is uh, to have a lot of uh, uh, trucks. Uh, trucks. Yes. We have fer pheromone traps. Uh, in organic uh, cultivation, we don't have any solution uh, that includes chemicals at all. So nothing, almost nothing is work. B besides the uh, pyretum, 
we have a material that named Piretum. If you are doing it properly once in a while, it might help. In the conventional one, we have several of options of uh, uh, chemicals. One of them is Avent, uh, the other is Coagen. Uh, these are chemicals, uh, materials that I think you need to, uh, um, to find yourself what you have available. But I have to say that uh, the best way to, to, uh, to do that is to monitor a lot, to have a lot of traps outside of the greenhouse and inside of the greenhouse and just to see if you have a lot of uh, holes so the penetration inside is easy so just treat that okay the most important thing to do is to prevent them to get in this is the the maximal uh, um, results that you can achieve about the chemicals really it depends you need to see in your distrib distribution dis distributors local one and upon the indian uh, law what you are uh, allowed to use and when, okay? It's really not very easy topic. Okay, I think at this stage, uh, thank you. I, I think we should close the uh, question part and actually summarize in short the webinar uh, and depart. I would say okay. the following. Gilad, and, uh, Gilad took us on a, an amazing visit, in my opinion, to this farm today. Mm -hmm. So thank you, first of all. We, Thank we you for having me. <laughs> we analyzed the infrastructure, we analyzed irrigation system and the agronomy of what we are having. And I think this is a very important uh, set of mind to have in our mind as centers of excellence, reflecting to farmers and setting example on how we can benefit by evaluating the passing season and not just forget about it and continue to the next season without taking any lessons learned. So the lessons learned and implementing the results is a very important takeaway from this webinar. I think for me, it was also an eye opener on how many new topics we can cover. So what I'm asking all of you, if you saw things that are interesting for you to dive deeper into and you want to hear more and to see more, please write to us write to Dev, write to me, and tell me this is a topic I would like to cover in the future, and this will help us uh, prioritize the areas of focus we should put, because we cannot do everything all the time, uh, but for you, guiding us what is your demand driven will help us prioritize the right webinar for you, so please tell us uh, after this, or after every webinar, what it is you like. I uh, would like to uh, say it at the end, thank you. Thank you to all the participants. Uh, thank you, Danny, Gilad, uh, Yuval, for taking uh, photography and being all the time with us. And of course, thank you, Ilan and Adav, the actual... Thank you, Yuval. Ilan and Adav, the actual owners of this farm, for uh, opening your farm to us. Uh, it means a lot. It has uh, so much value for us. So thank you. And of course, thank you, my colleagues back in India. I am now in Israel and hopefully soon back in India with you. Uh, so thank you. And thank you, MATC Omer today for uh, really coordinating all of this call. Uh, so I give it back to you, Omer, and uh, we will meet soon and we will let you know about the next webinar. And please, let's take forward this task that Gilad gave us okay, all. Okay. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Namaste. Good. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.